I turned the overdrive off because this invader is actually hot. It is a hot pickup. So you really don't need it. So let's put a little chorus in for that Randy effect. <laughs> something I'm working on. How do you like it? Thank you.
one finger chord thing because I just got through watching this Prince concert he did in 2001, 2000, something like that. And he's, most of the time he's playing chords, he's just doing like... <laughs> It is a hundred and friggin' thousand degrees out. <laughs> That's my excuse for today. But there you go. So here's the pirate guitar with some very uh, un <laughs> unflattering playing on my part. But hey, I'm blaming it on the heat. I always blame it on something. Truth be told, it's really this hand. If it's not gonna work, it ain't gonna work. And it sucks because I have no control whether I'm going to have good, a good day or a bad day. Which is, you know, that was norm, that was, you know, the norm kind of before the accident. Sometimes you played better, sometimes you played not as good. But my problem is someday my hand will do exactly what I'm telling it to do or what I think I'm telling it to do by memory and not looking, I try not to look, because if I look, I freak out because I can't feel the, the strings. A lot of people don't understand this, and if you're new to my channel, that's the whole problem is I lost uh, feeling in this hand, I, so I got neuropathy in my legs, my feet mainly, and this hand. From uh, inoperable back injury due to the head-on collision, caused by an illegal alien who was drunk and got away with it. Because I was in a coma for, for three months, it's kind of hard to question somebody that's laying in a coma. 15% chance of living. It's 10 years ago, next month. Not that I ever think about it. I don't really anymore. I used to think, I used to just all the time think about it for like a couple of years. Went to counseling, got it out. Because uh, everything had, I, I've said this, it wasn't just the accident. It was the accident, and then when I woke up, I realized I had no house that I just paid off, I thought. Yeah, well, I did just pay it off. No house, no wife, no job, nothing. Everything was... I mean, I had my guitars, I had, you know, my cars, motorcycle, all that stuff. But my house was gone. The job was gone. It sucked. So, you know, that, that, that was a, quite shocking and took a while to get out of, or over. And you do, I, I'm kind of over it. There's nothing you can do. If you think about it, what's that going to You're just stuck. So don't think about it. Go on. Go on with life. That's what I try to tell people that get caught up in these things and these little incidents, or big incidents in their life, and they just don't, they will not progress. They just dwell on it. I'm going, dude. You're letting that thing rob you of a life. Stop it. So there's your story for today. Instead of me just telling you about partying and the Blackie thing is kind of funny and it's short and uh, sweet because of my dear little wife. She's this little teeny 16 year old girl, really cute. I mean, she was cute. Everybody was after her. The biggest mistake I ever made was taking her to Hollywood after you know, got because when I met her, she was a she was kind of a street wise little sixteen year old uh, kid, and I just graduated high school, and I knew she'd been following me around and whistling at me and stuff. I knew who she was. So when I asked her out, she was like freaked out. She was all happy. She's remarried now to a very nice guy, and I, I really like this guy, and she has a boy with him so now my son has a 
uh, son, uh, what do you call that? Not step. He's got a brother in law. No, a brother, stepbrother, right? Who knows? Too many kids popping out. But, uh, anyways, at the time she was 17, I think. Yes, 16. 16. We were down in Hollywood and we were standing outside the rainbow. We didn't want to go in. No big reason. No reason to, I think. But we were just handing out flyers right for something. I think for the band I was playing in at the time. So, I think. Whatever reason, me and her were outside the rainbow. Right out when everybody's coming out. And it was at like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So, people were, you know, coming out drunk. And we were talking to somebody. And here comes Blackie. Now... For the past, the prior, yeah, the past two years almost, or a year at least, me and her had been down the street at their rehearsal. As soon as they got signed to Capitol, they started rehearsing at this place down the street called Visions. She had a big thing on the wall, big mirror so you could see yourself doing the, so they were practicing their stage and all this crap. Just before the album came out, we were there every day. I would take Chris and Randy on break up to a liquor store, they buy like four cases, pound them in their 45 minute break or an hour break because it was lunch. But you know, this is like lunch at seven o'clock at night. They pound like a case or two each. I'd get some out of it. And then they'd go back in chewing gum thinking Blackie didn't smell anything. Whatever, they could still play. So we were very well acquainted with them. Very well with all of them. So they do the get the album out. They play a few things around here, nothing big. I think country club and stuff. And then they went to England and did a little tour, like a couple of weeks. And they did that Lyceum, Lyceum, whatever, where they make a videotape, live wasp, live animal, or whatever the hell it was called. And uh, they come back. That's all they did. It wasn't a world tour. They didn't go to all these, they just went to England did a few shows and got their thing out because they were already getting press on Kerrang! from Kerrang! magazine. So anyways, out comes Blackie. He's drunk. I go, hey Blackie. He's like, who are you? And my wife's like, what the fuck do you mean? He's like, I don't know you. I'm a, I'm a rock star. I've been all over the world. Millions of people worship me. And I'm supposed to remember every one of them? I'm like, really dude? You've only been to England for like a couple weeks. That was like, the last time we saw you was like four weeks ago. So he's like, no. But so he keep, he gets on with the rock star crap. My wife is like, you know, F you. If you're going to treat us like that, you can go to hell. Because you're nobody. And you'll be a nobody as long as you treat your fans like this. And we're not just fans, we are your friends. Because we were. We buy them crap and drive the idiots around. None of them had cars. And Chris Holmes would sleep in the trash can in between rehearsals. So there you go. There's your story for today. Not too many drug references, I hope, because I don't want to put that out there anymore. Here's the guitar. See? Later. Unless you have anything to say. Uh, anything. And there it is. Remember that. Anything.